So we have uh, totally six topics. The first one is on uh, knowledge management challenges in introducing nuclear power in a newcomer country. This is more about human resource knowledge. Uh, the, I mean, not exactly human resource, the knowledge management. The knowledge management is very important aspect of an, a nuclear power industry, which we will see tomorrow. There is a presentation from me, I will tell you. And how that knowledge management challenge is going to affect a newcomer country and how, how a newcomer country has to take into consideration the knowledge management aspects. So this is the topic of uh, the first project topic. And there are uh, more information available about each of these project topics in the CLP for net. If you already have access to CLP for net, you can just go there and then see group projects and under each group project there are a lot of reference material added they talk about uh, more about all these project topics. And the second topic is about radiological impact assessment of developing and sustaining different energy sources for the generation of electricity. I mean, this is about, uh, there are various types of energy resources like coal, uh, you have wind, you have solar, nuclear, and Start, taking as a life cycle perspective, starting from all aspects of construction, commissioning, until the end of decommissioning, how it affects radiological impact, each, each of these uh, sectors, how they radiologically impact the environment. There is an interesting study when you are uh, listening to the presentation from Mr. Abel on Friday, you will have a very different understanding of how radiation impacts the society from different sources of energy. So. So this project is uh, something about different sources, how they have radiological impact. And the third one is about National Radiation Emergency Plan. The idea is that after the Fukushima incident, Radiation Emergency Plan and Emergency Preparedness has uh, received maximum attention in many countries. People are very much interested in to know about how to prepare for emergency and how to deal with them. So in this project, you will be selecting an an arbitrary country, I mean, or, I mean, imaginary country, you imagine something or, an, uh, or take, for example, a particular member state developing. And then there are certain principles available for emergency uh, planning and response. You will apply those principles and then you yourself will see how to plan and develop an emergency plan in a country. The mentor will introduce you to those principles on Friday. And from there, as a group, you will develop as a case study for a country how an emergency plan can be developed. And the fourth one is about explain the reasons for a state embarking on nuclear power program to establish and implement a nuclear security regime. This is also similar to uh, EPR, like a security regime if you want to implement for a country using the principles which are going to be discussed in, the, in this curriculum. Uh, you will identify how uh, those security principles can be applied for a country or a situation, and then you will develop this project. And the fifth one is, is the special regime of liability for nuclear accidents still justifiable today? The nuclear liability is uh, one of the very uh, important topics, again, discussed throughout the world. Again, after Fukushima, it has received a lot of attention. And uh, a legal expert is available to guide you and mentor you on these aspects. And this will talk about the various legal mechanisms available today and what are the shortcomings of those uh, things and what is going on in the industry and how we can evolve into a, uh, a good liability uh, uh, system for or liability regime for the nuclear uh, industry. That's the idea of this project. Uh, and you will discuss about the pros and cons of existing uh, laws and existing legislations in this. And the last one is very interesting, uh, is about root cause analysis. Root cause analysis is a very important aspect of a nuclear power industry. The industry has been uh, growing and developing and uh, gone to a matured level today because of analysis of past events, analysis of past operating experience. So here, 
practically you will be doing a root cause analysis. Uh, a situation will be given to you, like uh, it may, need not be a nuclear incident, it could be a conventional incident, and then what has happened in this incident you will be going through, and then you yourself would be analyzing those uh, event and then developing a root cause analysis. You'll identify what are the root causes for that uh, under the guidance. So, and briefly I introduced all the topics. If you have any questions on that, you can ask. Now you need to give me uh, three numbers in the, in the paper. One, two, three, you have to put in that matrix. Okay, and then uh, not necessarily that you would be given the choice of your project, but I'll try to give you maximum possible. Because maximum we can have seven people in a group. We are about 40 people. We have six projects. So about six to seven people in one project we will try to accommodate. I'll see maximum your choices, but try to put uh, the one which you want. Yeah, yeah, give it back to me. Yeah, you can put one, two, three anyway. Suppose this is your first choice. Put one here. Suppose this is your, this is your second choice. Put two here. Ready? Yeah, thank you very much. Very important, you have to write your name in the paper, <laughs> otherwise I will not know who was given. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question, actually. You are not going to prepare any report or anything. Uh, actually, please listen to me. Uh, the project, at the end of the project developed, you would be making a presentation in the last day. Uh, the presentation is going to last for about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes presentation, followed by that five minutes, the, all other members will ask you questions about your project to challenge you, your, your, your findings, your, your directions. So it's, you're going to make a, a, a PowerPoint presentation highlighting your outputs in, the, in, in whatever, whatever you've developed. So it's about 20, 20, 25 minutes, and the last day you would be presenting it. Thank you. Also, one more announcement I would like to make uh, for you is that uh, a visit to the Crisco nuclear power station. I had asked for some information, bio information like your name, passport number. Excuse me. Yeah, okay. So the information most of you have given to me. I got your email until yesterday evening. I, I have not seen the emails today. Uh, Excuse me. May, may I draw your attention, please? This is important. If you are not listening, you will not be coming to Crisco Nuclear Power Plant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because already there is a problem. That's what I'm trying to say. The Crisco Nuclear Power Plant told me today that uh, they cannot accommodate more than 30 people into the plant. They have a regulation due to security, or I do not know what's the reason. Uh, maximum of 30 people only can be allowed. I'm, I'm trying to negotiate with them to allow us in two groups or something. Let's see how it goes. But before that, I, two things I need is, one is the biological information, uh, which uh, my, my colleague, I asked uh, Sam to circulate to you. Give me the missing information. If you want to correct the information, there are some missing information in, that you have provided also. Please provide the missing information. Also, those who are not provided, please write the full information. This is number one. Number two, uh, you can privately talk to me tomorrow if you are already seen a nuclear power plant, if you don't want to see something like that, I would like to keep an option that those who do not want to visit uh, as another, another option. But then the visit is a two-part. Actually, don't worry about it. The visit has two parts. They, uh, they have an exhibition center in which they try to demonstrate how a nuclear power plant works. Uh, you know, that is allowed. Any number of people can visit. But the actual visit into the power plant, uh, I mean, they may take us very close to the control room. They won't obviously allow us inside a control room in a nuclear power plant. 
probably you can see how things look like in a nuclear power station. Uh, uh, that sometimes it may not be possible for more than 30 people. We will see how it goes. I will try my best to take all of you there. Uh, that's the that's the that's the information today. Yeah, please. Uh, not exactly, no safety shoes or anything, but uh, we need to have a business attire, like a full sleeve shirt and a pant. Uh, yeah. The turbine building or something. Yeah. Yeah. There is no specific personal don't protection equipment. Mm, don't get drive. scared. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you about the requirements for going to the plant. There are they have given what is the the requirements that what we should uh, what attire we should have what type of dressing and what type of other requirements. I'll tell you maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow more clearly. Any other questions at the end of the day? Very tired, you are all looking. We need a break now. We will have to go for uh, 7 o'clock. The dinner starts. I think see you there at 7 o'clock today. OK? Uh, the dinner is at uh, the same place where we had the coffee, the outside. Uh, yeah. Company, company address and phone and the group leader. The other one also they filled the 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 bio information. No, no, no. I haven't got everybody. I will, I will tell them. Hello, colleagues, colleagues, colleagues. Uh, for the people who haven't, you know, provided the uh, personal information for the visit to the nuclear power plant, please come to me and when you have time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the visit to the nuclear power plant in Slovenia, if you haven't given me your personal information, please come to me. Yeah. Thank you. 
Uh, just tell me your name. I wrote down here. 